This video addresses two questions. The first is, how are providers affected by the ACA? The healthcare reimbursement system in this country has been totally backwards. Uh, basically, uh, the most complex, expensive procedures are reimbursed the best. Uh, and that may seem logical, but you know, the effect of that is that uh, it drives physicians who are trying to pay off a quarter million dollars in loans or more from medical school into professions that reimburse the best. I can say that with a straight face because I'm a cardiologist, I've been a specialist my whole life, and I know that we often are paid a much bigger piece of the pie, uh, but we couldn't do our work if we didn't have good primary care practitioners to back us up. I can tell you as a doctor many times people would be hesitant to ask me questions and I'd turn around to walk out the door and they'd turn to the nurse and say, I really wanted to know this. And it's because they felt more comfortable. Integrate care this doesn't just mean uh, co-locating care. Uh, co-locating care is only good if you have a connection between the different providers, either as a team or as a handoff or as a way of sharing information about the patient. So that's gonna be part, it's a process. It's not just location. One of the interesting things with a more integrated approach to providing patient care is that providers from different disciplines have to begin working together. And training sometimes is very different. And the approach to patient assessment, diagnosis, care plans, the way you even document what you are doing with your patients can vary from profession to profession. What will change for the students is their roles will not be the same going forward as they have been traditionally. Primary care providers in Maine include physician assistants and nurse practitioners and we should be clear about that. that um, so when I'm using the word provider, I'm referring to those three sets, physicians, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants who may have their own patient panels. So those roles are all going to change. It will require actually a different, um, if not a, a different kind of person, at least a totally different approach, especially on the part of those of us who are providers, where instead of being autonomous and in control, um, we're collaborative and accountable to each other. Um, and that requires um, the ability to communicate and the ability to collaborate, a certain level of humility that some of us struggle with at times, um, and a problem-solving environment rather than a blame environment, which, um, frankly, medicine has been for a long time. If you're in a hospital, it may not affect you very much. If you're in a primary care practice, it should affect you a lot. Uh, if you go to work for a uh, mental health center, it should affect you a lot. And so that, that, it depends on where they, where they seek employment after their education. You know, if you're looking at, um, at, at your encounter as a new provider with a patient, how is this really going to change what your experience looks like? Um, fundamentally, hopefully it will change it for the better. Um, having more engagement from other healthcare professionals in the team-based environment so there's focus on mental health, um, focus on preventative medicine. So from a public health perspective, I think the ACA is great because it uh, provides for a lot of preventive services. And um, given that public health's main goal is around prevention, you know, we do a lot around uh, return on investment and things like immunization show a great return on investment and in reducing healthcare costs in the future. And so I think that's a huge part of the ACA that is really going to work. We're also seeing very creative use of pharmacists on the primary care practice teams where in some cases we either have pharmacy students from UNE or community pharmacists that are now integrated into the primary care practice team to be able to help the practices with those thorny issues of medication reconciliation during periods of care transition when a patient is coming in or out of the hospital or looking at very complicated medication regimens and helping to simplify those. I mean, social workers are critical because we have you know, so many families that struggle with their dynamics, with their relationships, and so much of the illness that we see today is really based just on poor relationships and, and stress at home. Once you talk about mental health, then you know there's other parts of the body that have been ignored. Uh, oral health is a huge concern. Another place where our teams are really important is going into the home. We have community care teams where we work with what we call the highest utilizers of the system. 
uh, people that frequent the emergency room often. I think part of the beauty of having a focus on team care is you don't have to be an expert in knowing how to reach out and be, say, culturally sensitive or understand, frankly, all of the different cultural norms that may exist in a growing diverse place like Maine is becoming so that uh, you can have people that understand the needs of a community. A community health outreach worker may be a very trusted voice. And it allows people to also have different relationships with patients that are therapeutic but have uh, perhaps different power dynamics. I think this is one of the things that's really under-discussed and undervalued, that having a team-based approach actually makes it more fun to be a healthcare provider. It makes you feel more secure. You have better knowledge in a team because nobody is smarter than all of us together. Our second question is how are healthcare systems affected by the ACA? As future healthcare practitioners, the Affordable Care Act can be a daunting um, piece of legislation. And I think, you know, it's not just daunting for you as students, it's daunting for everybody who's already engaged in the system. It's not like Medicaid, it's not like Medicare, it's not like a one piece of environmental legislation. It's really a bunch of different policies that come together that we call the Accountable Care Act. It addresses access to care, it addresses cost, it addresses quality, all with various policy initiatives. And so it'll affect health care in terms, a number of different ways. We spend more in this country than any other country in the world by far. Health care spending in the past year was at $2.8 trillion, and that's with a T. I often speak to provider groups and I ask them, how much do you think we spend on health care? And many of them start out with estimates in the billions. This is enormous, it is too much, and it is cannibalizing the rest of our economy. Another consideration of that is that we spent, that amount of spending represents nearly 18% of gross domestic product. That means almost one in five dollars of everything we spend in the economy in this country is spent on health care. That means that other things are suffering. For those of us who have children in schools, it means that the language classes get canceled, the art options get cut back severely. For those of us who drive on main roads and bridges every day, it means roads and bridges that aren't being repaired. It means real salary, real payroll, take-home pay it has failed to keep up um, as the cost of health care has increased. One uh, thing I would love to tell students is to think beyond the doctor's office or the clinical setting and to realize that um, their scope of practice can include things like advocacy and whether that means testifying um, up at the state house, or working more at the local level or even up at the federal level. I think um, looking at health policy is, is as important as, as their um, experience in health care. In states like Maine, we're incredibly fortunate to have a collaborative community, to have leadership present from many arenas, including state government, our Medicaid program, our healthcare provider systems, our provider groups, and an engaged consumer group uh, as well in the state. And by bringing those things together, I think it makes us incredibly well poised to make this healthcare reform happen on the ground. I challenge you to take what you've learned here today and uh, look how, at how you can implement it in your uh, practice as a student and your very soon practice as a professional. As you have learned, implementing healthcare reform is complex. As a team, it's your turn to share ideas about how to integrate and improve tomorrow's healthcare systems.